In this tutorial we will learn about RLPD algorithm and then we will implement it to our problem. As we can see, first our agent moves randomly and cannot reach the goal at all. But after training, the agent becomes able to reach the goal decently well. So, what is RLPD? RLPD stands for Reinforcement Learning with Prior Data. This method uses offline data such as expert trajectory to improve sample efficiency and online off-policy RL. Let's think where sample inefficiency comes from. First, in many environments, rewards are sparse. For example, if this robot obtains reward only when it reaches the goal, it should make a lot of unsuccessful attempts before it will get any. Second, off-policy algorithms like DQN, SAC, or DDPG rely heavily on random exploration at the start. They may collect a huge number of boring transitions before stumbling into something meaningful. You may think, then we can add some high-quality trajectories to accelerate learning. But it is not that straightforward. Naively mixing online and offline data can hurt due to distributional shift or bootstrapping errors. Let's see what distributional shift and bootstrapping error are. Distributional shift occurs when the agent learns a policy using data from one distribution but then evaluates or updates its value function and policy on states and actions it hasn't actually seen in that data. This is a problem because the queue function or policy is trained on the offline dataset, which may not cover all parts of the state action space. If the learned policy starts picking actions outside of the distribution, the model is forced to extrapolate. This often produces inaccurate queue value estimates. For example, an agent learned a policy on how to move on green road using these blue actions, but when it encounters an unknown road, the agent may take wrong actions. Next, let's see bootstrapping error. Off-policy RL algorithms update their value functions using bootstrapping. It means that current Q value is estimated from immediate reward plus the discounted value of the next state action. If the Q function is inaccurate on out of distribution states because of distribution shift, those errors propagate and amplify because each update uses the previous wrong estimate. This is called bootstrapping error accumulation. And this is a direct cause of Q values divergence. In RLPD, three improvements were introduced to mitigate these problems. The first is replay design. For each batch, 50% of the data is sampled from replay buffer, and the remaining 50% from the offline data buffer. This way of sampling keeps the agent grounded in current online data while leveraging the offline data for coverage and early guidance. The second is critic regularization via ensembling. At update time, by combining estimates of several critics, over-optimistic Q values can be reduced. In the original paper it was shown that ensembles consistently outperform dropout and weight decay methods. The third is layer normalization in the critic network. Layer normalization implicitly limits the scale of Q values, reducing catastrophic value divergence. Now let's see the problem we will solve using this method. We have a field of size 72 by 72 meters on which the robot will move. The field is divided into nine large squares. Each large square consists of nine small squares. In the middle of the upper left square, there is the start area of the robot and in the middle of the lower right square, there is the goal area. There are two black cubes placed inside each large square, except for the large square areas with start or goal areas. Each episode, 
location of each pair of cubes is changed randomly within a large square to which they belong. The objective of this simulation is to train the robot to move from the start area to the goal area without colliding with the cubes. The agent uses LiDAR scan of every 18 degree and X, Y difference of the robot coordinate and center of the goal area. So, state space is represented as a one-dimensional array with 22 elements. The robot moves forward with constant velocity. The only action it can take is to steer the front wheels. So action space is represented as a one-dimensional array with one element. The robot gets positive reward if the distance to the goal in the current step is shorter than the distance to the goal in the previous step. But reward is reduced if the robot is closer to the cube than the threshold value. Negative reward is given if the robot hits a cube or if the distance to the goal in the current step is larger than in the previous step. If the robot hits a cube, the episode ends. Now let's run the program. In this tutorial I expect that the viewer has installed ROS 2 Humble and Isaac Sim 4.5. Please download the RLPD tutorial zip file. Extract this file and move these two folders to your home directory. In the RLPD data creation directory we have USD files of our environment and a script to generate offline data. In the RLPD Isaac directory we have files for training. We will generate data using the create pkl python script. Open this file. In this script we have five nodes. A node which manages Isaac Sim, a node which gets position and orientation of the robot, then, another node which subscribes to laser scanner, a node in which clash calculation of the robot and obstacles is done, and a node which subscribes to Joypad. In the step function, when each episode ends, we save the data. When predefined number of episodes ends, we save them as a PKL file. Now, build these packages using Colkin build command. Launch the manual operation launch python script. Now, execute the create pkl python script. Navigate the car to the goal. We have to use only left stick of the PS4 controller. After the program ends, the PKL file will be saved. Move this file to the train data directory. Training is done in the train RLPD script. It seems that when we use a LiDAR sensor and Isaac Sim, memory is not released. This is not an issue when you do simulation for a short period of time but in our case eventually an out-of-memory error occurs. So, 
we run training related calculations in the main thread and Isaac Sim in child thread. After a certain number of steps, we restart Isaac Sim completely to avoid memory related issues. Before running the training script, do not forget to install the required packages using the requirements text file. To run training, execute the train RLPD script. We can see training results using TensorBoard. In this tutorial, for visualization we run the training with an opened application window. To save computational resources it is better to set the headless argument to true. In this case, the application window will not be shown, but you can see how the robot behaves using our viz. Let's see the training results. The training was executed for 35,000 steps. We can see that actor loss steadily decreases toward minus 150. Actor loss decreasing usually indicates the policy is improving. This is because the actor has been trained to minimize this equation. So, if Q is large and positive this whole equation becomes negative because entropy term is usually smaller in magnitude. We actually can see that Q value is increasing throughout training. Critic loss increases over training and shows some oscillations. As the agent finds higher value behaviors, it is also pushed to explore around those new areas, which leads to visiting more diverse states. Entropy starts relatively high then decreases toward minus 0.5. Lower entropy means the policy is becoming more deterministic. This fits the expected learning process, start broad, then commit to good actions. Temperature loss quickly decays toward zero, which means the entropy regularization target is being satisfied. This shows the entropy adjustment mechanism is working correctly.